This is the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. On today's program, we're going to talk about very important information regarding the future of the United States of America and the future of the world. There is a convergence of events that I've been talking about in my books and my writing of articles and speaking for decades, and now it is uh, converging. It is uh, emerging upon us. And when I say upon us, I'm not just talking about those of us that live in the United States of America. I'm talking about those of us that live in any nation on planet Earth. No matter where you live, in the USA, European Union, New Zealand, Australia, Asian nations, Africa, South America, North America, wherever, Canada, wherever you live, you are going to be impacted seriously by this long-term plan that is finally uh, coming into manifestation, so to speak. Now, the interesting thing about this long-term plan is that it was predicted by Bible prophecy. So on one hand, it, it just appears to be uh, <clears throat> a planned takeover of the planet by the elite globalists and the international banking families and the very highest level uh, tier or echelon of secret societies and occult groups that at a certain level, a certain percentage of them are open worshippers of Lucifer. Now that's not just some casual statement I stuck in there. Uh, in my books I have documentation of that, thorough documentation, substantive documentation, beginning with talking about the uh, Russian uh, occult teacher, Madame Blavatsky, in the late 1800s, who talked openly about the externalization of the hierarchy. She talked about the worship of Isis and the worship of Lucifer. And she taught the world's elite, people like Adolf Hitler and uh, people who were the heads of nations all over the world. And in fact, her disciples, such as Alice Bailey, set up Lucifer Publishing on the grounds of the United Nations <clears throat> to teach world leaders uh, how to... Uh, serve Lucifer. And then back then there was a public outcry, so they removed Lucifer Publishing from the grounds of the United Nations, and they uh, moved it more towards the Wall Street area, and they changed the name to Lucis Trust, L-U-C-I-S, which was code for Lucifer. But they still have their Luciferian training programs going on on the grounds of the United Nations. Now, as outrageous as that seems, and that's just a tiny part of the tip of the iceberg, there's more. And uh, if you don't believe that, or if you talk to people that don't believe that, then you need to become educated, read and study, or encourage your, the people that you're talking to to read and study. In my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, I detail all this <clears throat> for uh, 400 pages of documentation of uh, this kind of thing and other kinds of things. In my book, Mass Awakening, I detail this. When I say detail it, I quote the men from mainstream sources in their own writings. I'm not quoting from some Area 51 <clears throat> UFO website. I'm quoting the mainstream documentation, the books, the periodicals, the magazines that these uh, world leaders wrote and spoke in. And then in uh, The Day the Dollar Died, I talk about how their plan from the beginning was to destroy the dollar and bring in a global digital currency. And then in the brand new book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, 2016-2017, I focus in, right in on um, <clears throat> how the money system is their primary instrument, is the 
global elite's primary in, uh, method of total control over the population. The money system and Bible prophecy <clears throat> go hand in hand. And you cannot understand Bible prophecy unless you understand the money system. And it is through the money system that the global occult elite control the planet. Now, it's imperative for you to get up to speed because there's a lot of disinformation out there, by the way. There's a lot of uh, stuff on the internet that's just crazy talk, and you've got to watch out for it because, because that's done deliberately so that it makes it... The, the proliferation of all this crazy talk and weird conspiracy theories and stuff regarding such matters... Um, the reason the internet is filled with so much... Well, there's, there's a lot of good stuff in the internet, don't get me wrong. A lot of good stuff, but the problem is you've got to weed through the crazy talk, the nonsense that has been deliberately embedded into the internet so that <clears throat> when somebody does their homework and does their research and lays out to you what exactly is going on, uh, people uh, can often dismiss it as a conspiracy theory because they're reading all the other tinfoil hat stuff, you know what I'm saying? So that is the backdrop, by the way, of everything that's going on right now in America, the chaos, in the economic system, the social system, the political system, and it's behind the scenes in the global chaos. And we're going to expose some of this for you today and keep you up to the second on what's happening in America in terms of uh, political things, what's happening in America in terms of economics, the possibility of World War III, and other things that you have, you have to be up to speed on. But also, we're not going to just leave you there <clears throat> with fear and trepidation and the chaos. We're going to give you real hope, and we're going to talk about the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit that will supernaturally enable you to overcome and be used by God in the last days. Because all of this stuff is not catching God by surprise. God did not fall off the throne because these people are actively uh, implementing their global government, their global financial system, and their global religion. God did not fall off the throne. He's not caught by surprise. He warned us of such things uh, in the Old Testament, beginning with the account of ancient Babylon and the Tower of Babel, which was the world's first one world government, one world religion, and one world economic system. He warned us through the prophet Daniel. He warned us through the, the account of uh, Joseph in Egypt. He warned us through so many prophets in the Old Testament and the the, the teachings of the Apostle Paul and the words of Jesus Christ and the book of Revelation. So none of this should catch us by surprise. Jesus said it was coming. So the purpose of uh, giving you this truth, which will set you free, is not to instill fear upon you. No, 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 that's not the purpose. It's to set you free and then incorporate this with the teaching of God's prophetic word <clears throat> and the study of God's prophetic word so that when you understand it, you can supernaturally live the victorious life in the middle of it. Now, before I go any further, those books and DVDs, along with countless pages of free articles and free YouTubes and free messages I have, are available for you for free at paulmcguire.us, paulmcguire.us, um, along with books. Um, also, we're, we have launched our Roku channel, the Paul McGuire Report, and it's just in its beginning stages, but there's enough up there that I think will interest you a great deal. The Paul McGuire Report is the name of the channel on Roku, and as we continue to uh, receive support. We're going to really ramp up the television ministry as we're broadening this radio ministry. We are reaching people all over the world, by the way. So, paulmcguire.us for more information. Now, we recently had our Paradise Mountain Church meeting, the Days of Awe, where we were 
I gave a prophetic message about the future of America, what's going to come to America. And then we had a time of intercessory prayer and ministry. And as we repented of our personal sins and as intercessors, we repented for the sins of the church because judgment begins in the house of the Lord. Uh, I can tell you that the power of God filled the conference room and that the presence of the Holy Spirit was there. The presence of God was in our midst. And the glory of God was in our midst in a very, very heightened and unusual way. You could sense the power and the glory of God's presence. And you could sense the holiness of God's presence. Not to, conv uh, to, to, to uh, uh, keep guilt on people, but uh, I've been in many meetings where you sense the presence of the Lord. But this was rare in that we... Uh, the, the Lord visited us because we approached him in a biblical manner. And you could sense his holiness along simultaneously with his presence and his glory and majesty. And, and that's a very, I don't go to a whole lot of meetings where I sense the holiness of God along with the presence of God. It was very powerful. And, uh, the only other times I've experienced that, really, to be honest, at that level, was uh, when I have attended uh, David Wilkerson's church, the Times Square Church uh, in Manhattan, New York, before Wilkerson went on to be with the Lord. Uh, the worship there, you could sense the presence and the glory of God, but simultaneously you could, you could experience the holiness of God. And, and it struck me, uh, God bless uh, David Wilkerson, uh, what struck me when I would attend the Times Square Church on Times Square was that the, the anointing of the Lord that was poured out in that sanctuary was, was distinct and unusual, and it was very strong, very strong. I mean, the reality of God was very strong. And it was because in the atmosphere of the room, not only were we experiencing the presence of the Lord, but we were experiencing the holiness of the Lord and uh, the majesty of the Lord. And that really builds your faith. I mean, you feel like you're in contact with God at a deep level. Sometimes I go to meetings and, and I thank God there's the presence. Of, I always thank God when the presence of the Lord is there. But this was an unusual manifestation of both the presence of the Lord and the holiness of, of the Lord at the Paradise Mountain Church meeting. And uh, there's, there, there's like an authority of God that comes into the room. Oh yeah, he loves us and he accepts us. But you, but you recognize that you're, when you're in intercessory prayer, as we were, praying for our nation, praying for the world, uh, praying for our nation at this critical time, to, we were visited by an unusual, uh, it was like you could sense when the presence of the Lord entered the room. And I, I want to play, uh, play part of that for you on this radio program when we get the audio back and we have the video we're getting together. Uh, but I want to play part of it, the audio, because you can sense a change in the meeting when you, you, you feel that presence of the Lord very strongly. I mean, I, this is, I really, there's no way to, to, to use words to describe it. It's a holy, powerful thing. And it changes you because the, an anointing comes upon you. I mean, not just an anointing, but a deep anointing. The kind of deep anointing that breaks bondages, that breaks yokes, that heals people, that's supernaturally infuses people with power that sanctifies them, that delivers them, that releases them from all captivity. And then you have this sense that when you're praying for the nation and uh, even your personal needs, that they are indeed being answered because the holiness of the Lord, the majesty of the Lord, and the glory of the Lord, when they fill the room, as it did in our meeting the other night, um, there's just this absolute certainty that comes into your heart that you are now encountering God and that your prayers are unquestionably uh, being answered with power. 
And that's the way it should be, you know. Uh, God manifests his presence in different ways in different churches. But the one thing I want to counsel you is if you're going to a, to a church that says it's a Bible-believing or Christian church, and you never experience the presence of God, it doesn't have to be, you know, <clears throat> at the level I, I was just talking about. But if, there's, but if you walk into that sanctuary and you don't experience the presence of God, let me tell you something. It should be a big hint to you in giant neon letters that God has removed himself from that church. I laugh, but it's a tragedy. Because when the presence of the Lord is not in a sanctuary or not in a gathering of believers, that is a very clear sign that God has departed to a large measure from that group. And I have found over the decades that you can walk into a church sanctuary, whether or not there are people in it, by the way. There doesn't have to be anybody in the sanctuary but yourself if you walk in there. And you can sense if the presence of the Lord is regularly visita visiting that group or that church. Because what always happens when the people that are worshiping uh, allow the presence of the Lord in their midst, there's always a lingering of the presence of the Lord in the sanctuary, even when there's nobody in it. I've never once walked into a sanctuary where I couldn't feel the presence of the Lord, even with no people in it. And I knew that's because the presence of the Lord was regularly among the people. But I've also walked into sanctuaries and rooms where there is the complete absence of the presence of the Lord. And it's like a tomb if you're spiritually sensitive. It's eerie because it's a church, and yet you do not feel anything of the presence of God. And I don't even have to attend the, the service when the people are there because it always works this way. Even when the, the, the sanctuary is empty, if the people are truly worshiping God, you will sense the presence of the Lord. So that when you go to the meeting and the people are physically there, you'll also sense the presence of the Lord. But if they're not worshiping God in spirit and truth, there is no presence of the Lord. And no believer who's trying to be obedient to Jesus Christ should be fellowshipping and worshiping with believers that, when you're, that during your worship, you never sense the presence of the Lord. Look, it's, it's got God shouting at you with a bullhorn, I've departed to get out of there and find a place where the presence of the Lord is. But people are so dead spiritually in America. I'm talking about a certain percentage of evangelical Christians. They're so dead spiritually that they can't tell the difference. And in fact, in many churches in America, if Jesus Christ walked into the room in modern clothing without the big long beard and hair and stuff and just looked like an average person, and he wanted to share something politely without interrupting, he'd be thrown out of the church. Okay, enough of that. But that's an important truth to know. Now, we are looking at all kinds of things. The light is shining in the darkness and all kinds of stuff is being erupted and it is obvious that there is a titanic power struggle between the forces of good and the forces of evil in America and around the world right now. And I want to add that, that, that uh, this is not just on partisan lines. Make no mistake about what I'm saying. I'm not saying, I, I am not saying God is on the side of the Republicans and he's not on the side of the Democrats or vice versa. I'm not saying God's on the side of the Democrats and, and not on the side of the Republicans. Because at the highest levels <clears throat> of both political parties, both political parties, there is the elite that rules those political parties, both of them, that are corrupt and that they are doing the bidding of the globalist elite and the occult globalist elite. And, and, and whether they're of this party or that party is irrelevant. Because at the top, at the top, both political parties are being controlled and financed by the global political elite. And that's why you see so many people high up in the Republican Party uh, siding with the people high up in the Democratic Party. 
because they're one and the same. And we've, we've seen huge exposures here. For those that are spiritually discerning, uh, for those that have the Holy Spirit inside them, we're seeing American political dynasties, families that have produced several presidents and people in great political power, we're seeing what they were truly all about now that the light has been shined upon them. And, and leading politicians who have been masquerading as conservative and family values and Christian, they are not what they have claimed to be because they are willing to do things that will ensure the exact opposite of everything they claim to stand for. And they are making open alliances with people they claim to have disagreed with. And so what we, what we see, for most of us, we already knew it. Most of us knew this already. Many people didn't. Many people still don't get it. But most of us who knew it, this is simply a confirmation of what we always knew. But it's still, it's still very uh, upsetting. It's still very shocking to see physical evidence of what you suspected right in your face. The bias and the lying of the media is unprecedented. Newt Gingrich was making a comment the other day where he said in his lifetime, and I don't know how old he is, but that would include a whole bunch of presidents, he has never seen the media lie 24-7 in an all-out assault against any candidate. In my lifetime, I have never seen an all-out assault 24-7, primarily built on lies, on one candidate. Never saw it. And how the media will choose to ignore and omit all kinds of important information that is critical to the election. They will censor it. They will bury it. And then they will uh, focus in on sensationalistic, quote, sexually oriented material, some of which is blatantly not true. And scandals, uh, primarily against one candidate, but they're also doing it against the other candidate to some degree. And the reason is they don't, the media is complicit. They don't want to talk about the issues. So they want to talk about, talk about sex scandals. Now, I am, um, this is not bragging, please don't misunderstand me, but because I was in the film business for so many years and studying screenplay writing with some of the best screenplay writers in Hollywood and things like that, and because of my years in the media business and PR and being on the, being on countless times on the major cable news networks and all that stuff, uh, and because of my training, you know, I can look, I, it's not 100% foolproof, but I can look and usually tell, usually, not, not all the time, uh, when someone's lying. Because if you're perceptive and you've been trained, people who lie uh, give off uh, clues, uh, physical clues to their lying. The way their eyes dart, whether their eyes look up to the right or the left, subtle uh, facial mannerisms, ma subtle uh, mannerisms with their body language, uh, the pacing of their words, uh, certain characteristics that their eyes are reflecting. Uh, you can tell whether what they're saying is make-believe or they authentically uh, uh, were abused or whatever. And so I was looking at several of the women who are making these allegations, and some I could not tell, okay? I tried to be as objective as I could, some I could not tell. One, I couldn't tell completely because she never looked up from the script she was reading, which was conspicuous in and of itself. But then I looked in the eyes of some of them, and I knew, I knew flat out within seconds they were lying. Because they left so many body language, facial mannerism, uh, eye cues, pacing, uh, uh, you know, people who are perceptive uh, and trained can 
usually tell when someone's lying. It's not 100% foolproof. But then it later turned out that they were lying because there were uh, uh, witnesses that came forth and discredited them. Now, the media, though, never checked out their stories because they had a hidden agenda. And that's the problem we're facing in America. You see, this is the problem. It's a spiritual problem, ultimately. It's not a political problem. I mean, it has political manifestations, but ultimately it's a spiritual problem. Going back 50 years ago, when America began to depart from Judeo-Christian values, when they stopped teaching that there was an absolute right and wrong in the school system, when they stopped allowing young children to be taught that there was a God and that we're all accountable before our actions, before God, and that there's a right and a wrong, and that lying is wrong, uh, and telling the truth is right, when we began to gut our society through the media and other things, an education of Judeo-Christian or biblical values, we have now raised many generations. Uh, and, the, and the turning point, the great turning point, was the 1960s counterculture where it was sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and dope and everything else. So the thing is, though, we now have many politicians who, who went through that period who are the, in the highest seats of power in our land and in the media. And they lie. They lie pathologically, and there's a very insidious act going on. They lie because in, their, in, in the interior of their beings, they have convinced themselves that they are justified in lying because um, of whatever the particular cause is. And that's a very dangerous area to enter when you justify doing wrong because you're convinced you're doing the right thing. That's how totalitarianism, that's how Nazis, that's how communist dictatorships take over. And it's very frightening to see this Nazi-like media apparatus in America and this collusion between the most powerful news organizations in America, political parties, and... Uh, um, other organizations like the entertainment industry, this collusion, very, very evil, and it's very, very widespread. And it's at work, by the way, in both parties, especially among the elite. Uh, politicians in both parties, especially among the elite, were lying, distortion uh, is, like, is like the norm. So, behind all this, we face a very serious challenge that will impact people around the world. Whatever you na nation you live in uh, is going to be impacted around the world. And God, and this concerns me a great deal, God is alive and well. God is listening to and answering the prayers of his true remnant church. Those people that are filled with the Holy Spirit in the word of God, and are obeying God by praying and interceding and fasting and crying out to him and asking him for a supernatural intervention in the election and praying for both candidates because that's wisdom. You want to pray, pray for both candidates because you don't want there to be uh, somebody to, to die or get sick or whatever because that would throw chaos into the system, which would which would uh, allow all kinds of evil to happen. But the call to prayer, spiritual warfare, peaceful spiritual warfare, is so strong by God. God has raised watchmen, such as our ministry, but other ministries too. God <clears throat> has raised up watchmen on the wall to blow the trumpet before God's people and alert them to the fact that the enemy is coming towards the camp of God from the distance and they need to prepare themselves spiritually and otherwise. God has raised up watchmen to warn God's people to be proactive, especially spiritually, before disaster comes. But God's people, in America especially, the majority of them, uh, have hardened their hearts to the Holy Spirit, and they uh, 
can't hear God. Because you know how that happens? It's, it's incremental. When you start ignoring God in the small things of your life, the next thing you know, you've hardened your heart to the voice of the Lord, and, and you've, you can't hear him any longer. Because you developed a habit of ignoring him. I mean, when you have actively developed the habit of ignoring the Lord speaking to you, then why would you expect that in, in a time of great danger, you would be able to hear the Lord because you've just spent five or ten years developing the habit of ignoring him? No. His, his voice is, is dead to you. You're deaf to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Many preachers in America are deaf to the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's very dangerous because God is sending out a warning. And any person in America or in any nation in the world, if you're listening to me, and if you can't hear the Lord calling you to intercessory prayer, to stand up for righteousness, for evangelism, if you can't hear the warning call of the Lord, if you can't hear the shofar being blown by the watchman in the tower, uh, warning of the advance of the spiritual enemies in the distance, then it's not that God isn't warning, it's that you're not listening. And you need to repent. No, I'm serious. You need to repent of your hard heart and ask God to forgive you and set you free from your hard heart. Now, I'm going to say something right now that, that may be, I don't know, difficult for some people to understand or whatever. I, 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 have a, I have a very strong sense that what I'm about to say is going to be met by a certain percentage of people with a great deal of resistance, and other people will, the majority of people, you will be open to what I'm saying, and you'll agree with what I'm saying. But a certain percentage of you listening will uh, not agree with me, and probably become angry. Now, I'm not, first I want to say, I'm not saying this to condemn you, so please understand me. I'm not condemning you. I'm not trying to be holier than thou. I'm not putting you down, and I'm not assuming that myself or anybody else is spiritually superior to you. We're all, we're all on the same level. So please understand that. And all of us, including myself, have been guilty uh, numerous times in our lives, none of us are perfect, of hardening, hardening our hearts to the Lord. So it's not like I'm saying I'm better than you, I'm not better than you. But Right now, the Lord is really speaking to his people in a significant way. And I just want to say this to you, again, not condemning, but if you can't hear the voice of the Lord, then what you need to do is stop everything. And right now, don't be angry at me. Don't be angry at the Lord. Don't blow it off and justify it. Don't, don't say, well, he's laying some legalistic trip on you. No, I'm not. Just stop whatever you're doing right now. If you can, if you can't, do it later. And ask God to uh, repent of your hard heart and ask God to open up the channels of communication again. God isn't going to beat you up. God still loves you. In fact, God, God will delight in the fact that that you've chosen to repent. And we all have to repent. For crying out loud, I have to repent constantly. You know, just because I'm a minister and a Bible teacher doesn't mean I don't have to repent. Uh, a Bible teacher is, is judged with a greater standard. I have to repent more than anybody because I'm a teacher. And, uh, you know, the heart of man is desperately wicked. We, we all deceive ourselves, including me, you know. I mean, you can behave a certain way. I'll give you an example. Um... And that's for anybody listening to show you the way the Lord convicts me. He convicts me all the time. And I, and I am often resistant to it, by the way, and get annoyed. So that's why I'm not, I'm not trying to lay a trip on anybody. I'm not better than you. Okay, so this is how it, it works. So I was, we were loading up some uh, conference messages or, no, it was Paradise Mountain Prophecy message, Paradise Mountain Church prophecy message, we were loading up to the Roku channel, Paul McGuire report, and uh, my son was editing it, and I just happened to hear myself say a sentence or two, 
And uh, it was meant kind of like a sarcastic joke. And the people laughed. And I don't know if, if the people perceived this or not, but when I heard myself speak, even though the people laughed, I felt like a knife was stabbing in my heart. I mean, I, it, it, it was physically painful to hear myself speak because even though people were laughing, I felt, I mean, like God convicted me and it was like being stabbed in the heart with the Holy Spirit. I mean, it hurt. God convicted me and said, you, me, Paul McGuire, you said that in an arrogant manner. You were arrogant. Now, I knew it was true because he convicted me. I could feel the power of the Spirit just go wham. You know, he nailed me. And I winced, you know, it was like I was embarrassed. There's nobody around, just me. But, but I winced because I said to myself, oh my God, I was so blind, so self-deceived that I would say that in that way. Now, probably most people wouldn't have picked it up. Maybe some would, I don't know. Because they laughed, they accepted me. But I knew, because the Lord pointed it out to me, and I, I didn't defend myself before the Lord because I knew the Lord was right. I could feel the arrogance in what I said. And I was really ashamed of myself. Really, I was. Really ashamed of myself. Still think about it. And so I tried to adjust my messages. I mean, I have a particular style that's different. And, and some people perceive as arrogant sometimes. And I'm not being arrogant, okay? But in, in this case, I was arrogant as far as I was concerned, and I think the Lord was concerned. So I repented, and it set me free. And now I've tried to be more sensitive not to enter into that, you know, state to kind of guard myself from it. So this happens all the time when you're a Bible teacher, a minister, or just a regular Christian, you know. Uh, same with loving people, you know. I, I minister on loving people all the time. And then... The Holy Spirit, by His grace, allows me to love people in, in a very, I mean, generally speaking, I love people and accept people probably more than a lot of other people do. That's not boasting. That's just a gift the Lord's given me. But that doesn't mean I'm perfect. And every once in a while, you know, it's subtle. You don't even realize you're doing it. I'm walking in a conference or something, and I ignore somebody or I shut them out of my minds, and it's like... I'm not doing it like consciously, deliberately. It's like more subconscious. But the Lord will say, Paul, you just walked by that person and they needed a smile from you because they know who you are and they needed affirmation and you didn't even look at them. And I'm convicted. I have to repent. So we all do. So anyway, if you can't hear the voice of the of, of God, the voice of the Holy Spirit, warning you now. I want, I want everybody who was hard in their heart, who was not hearing from the Holy Spirit, warning them about the time we're in and giving them instructions in the time they're in to pray, if, if you wish to, uh, I believe <clears throat> God's calling you to do it, but it, it's your choice. If you wish to repent, and clear up the lines of communication before you and God. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. You can join me. And I believe God will do that for you. And it's important because, you see, when we develop the habit of ignoring God when he speaks to us, it, we develop the habit of simply not hearing from God in any place. Because, you see, God is always speaking to us. He gives us the command. He tells us to do this. He tells us to do that. And sometimes mentally, we don't want to do it, so we justify it, and we shut down his voice. We, we're hard. God is actually speaking to us to do something, but, but we just turn the channel in our brain, and we shut him out. That's very dangerous. Part of experiencing revival in our nation, in our lives, is, is repenting of that kind of thing. Okay? So pray this prayer after me, if you would like to uh, repent of that sin. Because that sin, repented of, will open the door of revival. Lord Jesus Christ, and you can say it in your own words if you want, or 
no, acknowledge it silently or whatever. Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you, Father, and I admit, God, that I have developed the habit of hardening my heart uh, and ears to your voice. Lord, I confess to you the sin of ignoring you, choosing to harden my heart and not hear your voice, God. I have done this many times. You might mention a time where you did it to, to the Lord. And I ask you to cleanse me of that sin right now in Jesus' name, because I repent of it. And then, Jesus, I ask that you would deliver me <clears throat> by the power of your Spirit from this habit of ignoring you and being deaf to your voice. I ask that you change me, God. I ask that you would make me sensitive to hear your voice when you speak to me. I ask you to give me the grace to obey you when you speak to me. Now, Lord, I thank you for forgiving me. I thank you for opening up once again the lines of communication. <clears throat> I ask you to cleanse me in my heart of anything that is causing this uh, hardening of heart. And I thank you that you have accepted me and restored me, <clears throat> and you're giving me the ability again to hear your voice so that I might walk in victory in Jesus' name, amen. See, that all that isn't all that hard. It's just we're reluctant to do it. So God bless you for doing that. It may seem like a small thing, but guess what? Watch as the days go by. Your life will change, and you'll begin to experience revival. <clears throat> so, very important, hearing the voice of the Lord thy God, because God is raising up watchmen, all over the world in various nations. And this ministry is a watchman ministry, by the way. We have other functions. We go into all the world and preach the gospel. We make disciples of all nations. We uh, uh, teach people how to occupy spiritually until he comes. But we also function in a prophetic ministry. Again, I don't claim to be a prophet on the level of a Ezekiel or a, or a Joel, but God uses our ministry prophetically. And um, um, God uses us as a watchman to warn people uh, pro prophetically. So, even though we're a small ministry, by God's grace, we reach millions of people each month through, through the spectrum of social media. So you can send this program, and I encourage you to, to your friends anywhere that need to hear it by going to paulmcguire.us. And we have a whole bunch of social media apps you can use to play this program, play from the archives, send it and listen to it for your friends, on your cell phone, on your laptop, or any kind of technology you want to use. Go to paulmcguire.us, and you can use iTunes, and YouTube, and SoundCloud, and Stitcher, and RSS feed, and uh, Blueberry, and all kinds of social media apps. And then uh, pray, because the, the spiritual battle is great right now. And for, for now, the windows of opportunity are open. Uh, the media, it's precarious, and we're using social media. We're, we're ramping up our television ministry, because many people are visual, and we need to acquire more broadcasting equipment, cameras, uh, lighting packages, and all kinds of stuff. We've already purchased all kinds of stuff, but we want to launch it, the Roku channel, and other television broadcasts in a professional manner. So we still need <clears throat> more equipment, uh, more computers and stuff to do it right. And we want to expand the radio program, continue the church services, and hopefully, if we can do it, live stream the, the Paradise Mountain Church meetings and other meetings so people can be blessed all across the nation and around the world. So I pray that those of you that are being called by God to uh, help us by choosing to become regular uh, partners, uh, regular prayer partners who will intercede and pray for me, my family, and this ministry on a regular basis, as a ongoing partner, I thank God for you, and I pray that you would accept that divine assignment. 
for those of you that are being called to be uh, a partner, a regular monthly partner in gifts and contributions and donations, I pray that you would accept that assignment and help us finance the outreaches and ministry that God has called us to. And for those of you that can partner just by spreading the message and the links, well, we thank God for you. Uh, we thank God for all of you who are, choose to obey the Lord as he is calling people right now to uh, partner us, partner with us in bringing in this last day's soul harvest. And you can go to paulmcguire.us for more information on that. By the way, all the books that I write, the monies from the books, first of all, all the books are for the purpose of ministry. They're, 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 they're like tracks, except they're books, and they reach a lot of people for Jesus. They're an extension of our ministry, and uh, they get into a lot of hands all over the world. And uh, I just wanted to mention that. So join us, stand with us. This is a critical time. We really need to ramp up the television thing. I know I've been talking about it a long time, but I'll be very honest with you. It's been a real struggle. We have equipment. <clears throat> we have expanded. <clears throat> but uh, <clears throat> we have some dynamic stuff up on the Roku channel right now. The Paul McGuire Report. But, but to, to, to launch a daily or weekly program, I mean... I'm very frugal. Please understand that. I am extremely frugal. I used to be a Hollywood feature film producer. And by a Hollywood uh, feature film producer, I produced two sci-fi movies that were shown in theaters all across the United States and the world. But I was an independent Hollywood feature film producer. So, I mean, we weren't working with massive budgets. And uh, I, I was the... Uh, marketing consultant, I formed distribution companies, marketing consultant on uh, some of the biggest Bible prophecy feature films and DVDs produced that sold in an excess of a million copies each. I didn't get the money for it. I accepted a fee. But that's because I was involved in other things and I, I couldn't, you know, it's a long story. Anyway, I didn't get rich on it because I I was working as an independent contractor. So the point is, though, I've learned years ago uh, by being trained by other independent feature film producers to be frugal and, and to maximize your dollar. And, you know, you can be very, come up with very good stuff by being an imaginative. In any case, though, you, you need to have a certain level of quality. Otherwise, everything backfires on you. Okay? And uh, trying to avoid that. Anyway, if you choose to help us and pray for us, and I pray that you do, uh, we can do this together. And, uh, you know, I met, I keep, people keep coming to the church meeting, and they're from, they fly in from different states and stuff, or they're, they, many people drive two hours or more to attend these Paradise Mountain church meetings. And the, and the emails and stuff I get from all around the country is that people, there's a lot of people who are not connected to a church that they can relate to, where the pastor's preaching on stuff that's important to them, they're not being ministered to, and they're all asking me, we want you know to link up with you, Paul, <laughs> if nothing else, but by, by some kind of uh, uh, internet technology so that we can participate, so we're not isolated and by ourselves. And I really want to do that, but I need your help to do it. By the way, the Babylon Code is the number one selling prophecy book in the world right now. And it, it let me put it this way. It's being read by some very prominent leaders in our society. And I'll leave it at that. And uh, it, just, it just came out in paperback, so you can save on it. And I wrote that with Troy Anderson, my co-author, who is a Pulitzer Prize-nominated journalist. And it explains what ancient Babylon was all about, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's, it's a good book. Um, so anyway, I wanted to mention that to you. Now, back to what's happening. So, okay, so we have, this, we have all this heavy stuff coming at us. 
And we have a lot of potential dangers on the horizon. And that's what I want to talk about, the potential dangers and the answers. The potential dangers are the very strong possibility of in the U.S. and around the world losing more freedoms. What freedoms, freedoms am I talking about? Losing more freedom of speech, more freedom of religion, more freedom of the press, and other freedoms. In the United States and around the world, they are chipping away at these freedoms and they're taking away these freedoms. We're in an Orwellian surveillance state, and if what you say is not deemed as politically correct, the official dogma, like in a totalitarian state, you can be shut down and censored or whatever. If you have the politically correct viewpoints, then you're okay. And that the politically correct viewpoints would be, uh, you know, anything that fits in with the uh, uh, world socialist uh, government globalist movement, uh, then that's politically correct. But if you are speak out against these things, or you speak up for biblical truths, you're not politically correct. And there are many ways of censoring you. And I talked about this uh, while a guest on the Hagman and Hagman report uh, about a week or two ago, when I was talking to Doug and Joe Hagman, and they were talking to me about how they are regularly seeing now that their rankings are, are being rigged. So how many hits they get, how many views or listeners they get is being rigged. And uh, Joe Hagman gave me an example. He said, Paul, like, okay, so you're coming on tonight. So, like, you know, tomorrow morning, and that's not, that's not including all the people who, who, massive numbers of people who listen to the interviews days and weeks after they're originally done. He said, but tonight you're on the program, and by tomorrow we might have 50,000 people who have listened, which is very, very high, by the way, for, for just an initial listen. He said, but then by the end of the week, on certain ranking things, it'll say there was only 1,000. So then he made the comment, how did we go from 50,000 down to 1,000, when in actuality, the 50,000 would probably be 75,000 or 100,000 or more. How did we get from 50,000 to 1,000? Because there's computers that are rigging the numbers. And why they're rigging the numbers is because the, the, the lesser numbers you have in terms of hits, visits, listens, watches, seriously negatively impacts your advertising revenue if you're selling advertising. I don't sell advertising for the most part. Uh, and it also uh, it, it, it destroys and erodes your power and authority. In other words, if, if people falsely perceive you as some kind of whack job that, you know, a couple thousand people listen to, then you're marginalized. Your power is marginalized everywhere because it's perception. Uh, and this is happening to, to, to ministries. It's happening to me. It's happening to people who have a conservative position. And it's being done by the social media companies, it's being done by the tech companies, it's deliberate, it's orchestrated, and it's done subtly but by computer. They're manipulating the rankings because what they're doing is they're destroying the ranking numbers of people that they, it's like if you're against global warming, you're going to be buried in the rankings. Um, so they're manipulating. It's a form of hidden censorship, and they can do it in a very sophisticated and somewhat subtle matter through computers. So um, this is a war uh, against free speech, and it's a manipulation of what is popular. And so you, and they're guilty of it. I mean, they admit it. They get caught all the time in emails and policy statements saying that they're doing this. So for example, I've noticed on my media over the years, I've been watching this over the years, I'll notice that YouTube's, YouTube messages that I've given in the past, I mean, some, some have low numbers simply because they don't, I, I put them up there knowing that they're not going to have high numbers, but I think they should be up there, so I put them up there, but I don't expect high numbers because of the topic. 
And there's other stuff that I know will have high numbers because of the topic. So for years, I used to notice that the stuff that I knew would have high numbers, it would explode on the internet. I'd get 120,000 watches on a YouTube video, or 50,000, or 25,000, or in excess of 200,000, or whatever, okay? So I've noticed, though, as time goes by, as, as time goes by and I look back at the ones that were at like 170,000, they're now down to 15,000, or others are down to 1,000. In other words, they're being cut by two-thirds, 90%, 50%. They're, they're across the board being artificially lowered, but they do it in a sneaky manner. So because I might have, it, one, something might have been toasted, posted three years ago, um, and it had huge watches sneakily as five years go by or three years go by. I go back and look at it, which I don't often do, but I do occasionally, and it has hardly any watches. And I began to notice this with other people's uh, websites and blogs and ministries. I began to notice this on the Hagman Report, which Joe pointed out, because I would look at the rankings, and the rankings of the Hagman Report uh, were often way higher than many of the biggest, no, no, many of the cable news network television shows. N not as big as O'Reilly and the, and the big ones, but bigger than most of the stuff on many of these networks. I mean, they, they had sizable numbers. But then... I noticed that they were manipulated, that they're playing with the rankings, especially the YouTubes, because I, I was watching the YouTubes, and I can, you know, they start out high and they end low. That's impossible. And the big social media companies are doing that. So they're, what that is is rigging the system. It's promoting people that promote ideas they want promoted, and it's neutralizing, marginalizing and to be blunt, destroying any voices that are politically incorrect. <clears throat> it's George Orwell's big brother on steroids. <clears throat> so every one of you that are listening, you need to educate your friends and yourselves about the fact that when you go to <clears throat> many uh, conservative websites or prophecy websites or Christian-oriented stuff, or anything that's not political, uh, po politically correct, even if it's secular. When you see the numbers, don't believe the numbers. I mean, sometimes they're accurate, but you have no way of knowing whether it's accurate or not. It's being rigged. They're rigging the system, just like they're rigging the election. And who is doing the rigging? The globalist elite. Because remember, six corporations, just six corporations, or as somebody said, just 20 media executives control all the content and the information of the major media, and all of the major media, for example, is at war with few exceptions. Why is it that all the major media, with few exceptions, is at war against one candidate? What does that tell you? What does that tell you? It tells you whether you like that candidate or not, whether you're going to vote that for that candidate or not. It tells you that that candidate is obviously a threat to their agenda or they wouldn't attack him. And what is their agenda? A globalist socialist society that's politically correct, but here's the con job. Here's, here's where they lie. Here's the con job in brainwashing. Because these agents of change for the, the occult globalist elite, because you see, at the highest levels of the elite, it's occult-oriented. Illuminati, Luciferian, occult symbols, etc. It's compartmentalized. But see, the way the game works is that... Um, They've used the educational system, the media, the entertainment industry, and many other methods of uh, indoctrinating people to go along with this program for a world socialist government. 
planned by H.G. Wells, the great science fiction author, Invisible World, War of the Worlds, Aldous Huxley, who wrote Brave New World, and others. And I talk about them, and I write about them in my books, okay? And you need to be educated about what the plan is. And speaking of the plan, there's a particular... Uh, his name is uh, Joe Scarborough. Uh, I almost never watch him because I really have a, a very negative, visceral uh, reaction because he's so biased. Now I could be incorrect, so so I'm not. Let's just say that I'm not. I'm not saying this is factual because I don't want to. I don't want to accidentally say something and it not be true. So I'm not sure this is true. I think it's true, but I may be mixing him up with another media personality. So I can't claim it to be 100% true, which sounds kind of like ridiculous, but I'm thinking out loud, so just ride with me. There's a lady named Brzezinski, who, who I assume is the granddaughter of Brzezinski, the big uh, globalist co-founder of the Trilateral Commission. She's either the daughter or the granddaughter. I'm guessing she's the granddaughter. I'm not really sure. So anyway, she is a uh, media personality on the same cable news network where Joe Scarborough is, is a host. And I believe that she and uh, uh, Brzezinski, the female, the younger female, and... Joe Scarborough are dating or in some kind of relationship. I hope I'm not mixing it up with somebody else from that network. But in any case, she and somebody else from that network are, are dating, okay? Or were dating for a while. And it's very interesting, that relationship, because he's like, you know, your typical autopilot, brain on autopilot leftist, and he was just slamming into Dr. Benjamin Carson, who has the highest integrity, he was a very intelligent man. And he speaks softly, but he's very, very perceptive. And uh, Brzezinski was not on this particular interview, but she's been on others. It was just Joe Scarborough and some other people interviewing Carson. And they hammered him unjustly because he confronted another female host who was just in your face, all out attack, assault mode, wouldn't let him get in a word edgewise. And Carson kept saying, he was bold and, 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 he, and confrontive, but polite, but he needed to be. He put, he put his hands up and, and said, literally, can you turn her microphone off? And they were highly offended. But I would have said the same thing, by the way. And I used to do tons of debates on the big cable news networks. And after my initial first debate, where I held my own, as I shared in an earlier program, I studied intensively uh, the techniques of the hosts and all my potential opponents. I would study via video, like a, like watching, like a prize fighter in training would study videos. Of a, of a potential boxing opponent. I would study the, 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 the videos so I would know how to deal with them and win, and I would be able to figure out their strategies and the, the, the things they did to, to get over. You know what I'm saying? So after I went through that self-training process, <clears throat> I literally never lost a debate, and I did a ton of debates. Now, the only time it would not have been a clear victory on my side is because they all <laughs> they rigged the they rigged the debates all the time, and this is how they rigged the debates because I did tons of them. I always won, always, because I would cram, stay up late studying the notes and the facts, and most of them were lazy. Okay, they thought they were big shots, and so they didn't really prepare, and that gave me an advantage. But you see, when they, if you're trying to make your point and then they take the camera off you, they take the camera off your face while you're talking, 
trying to make an important point, and they and and if you're winning, they'll take the camera off you and your face, and they'll put it on your opponent, who's frowning and shaking his head. Well, it, it totally undermines your argument and, 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 and gives your opponent the advantage, even though technically you're winning. And they do other things: lower the mic, uh, switch, give you a smaller frame in the camera, or do a split screen where where uh, you'll be winning the argument, making a cogent point, but on the other side of the screen, equal size is your opponent who's snickering or whatever, and of course it undermines you. Or being interrupted by the host who's favoring the other candidate. Okay, So uh, this happens all the time. And there's nothing you can do about it. But they're rigging it, depending upon whether they like what you're saying or not. Now, if they like what you're saying, then it goes in your favor. But, but you know, I'm not interested in saying things they, that they like. I'm interested in saying things that I believe in. So anyway, um, I thought that uh, Carson, Dr. Carson, handled it very well when he uh, politely just told, said, cut the mic on her, because she, she, they wouldn't allow him to get a word in edgewise. She just verbally barraged him. And if you listen closely, she was defending the, the elite. It was a British journalist, a female, and uh, she was you know, fairly attractive. Uh, loud voice, uh, fairly articulate. That doesn't mean she knows what she's talking about, but she's fairly articulate. But when you listen carefully to what she was saying, her whole argument was is that we need, she was saying, we need an elite that, are, that is smarter than us to run our political system and our economic system. Which, when she said that, she, she inadvertently betrayed who she was, and who she represented. She's an agent of the globalist elite because she was advocating for them. So Carson interrupted her and said, you know, you're not interested in me answering anything, and the only reason you keep asking me about this girl that was uh, uh, allegedly, allegedly sexually harassed is because the only thing you're interested in doing is discussing things that will further your political narrative, which is true. And then Scarborough, unfairly, because he couldn't win Carson with logic and reason, Scarborough did his, like, hyper-arrogant, rude, in-your-face, basically telling him to shut up, okay? Because Scarborough doesn't ever offer an intelligent argument. He just bravado. But he's a fake, Okay. He, he's able to get away with bravado because he's propped up and they manipulate the sound levels in his favor, the camera angles in his favor. But he's like, you know, the Wizard of Oz. He's just, he's, just a, he's a nothing being propped up by an illusion. So anyway, this is how the, 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 the systems are rigged and truth is manipulated. Now, who's behind it? The globalist elite are behind it. And that's what people need to understand. And I've devoted a lifetime into studying this. And God's hand has been directing me and preparing me to teach, explain, and to study this for an entire lifetime. And as I shared with you in parts before, um, I was reading uh, Alice Huxley's Brave New World, George Orwell's 1984, and books of that nature <clears throat> when I was in third grade uh, at the public school, 69, in Jackson Heights, Queens, which looked like a prison, PS 69. And I thoroughly got the message of those books. And, and the Lord used those books, even though they were secular books, to turn my brain on and to turn my inner person on because he was unlocking my destiny without me knowing it. So I began to research all these utopian novels and stuff of futuristic dictators, etc., for decades, decades before I was saved. And then I, as I was saved and I began to do research, it led me back into this area, and I recognized there was an globe, that there exists in the world today, and it has existed since the time of ancient Babylon, a globalist occult elite that is Luciferian in nature, that is controlling the world for their benefit, but they're serving Lucifer, and as such they're being rewarded by Lucifer, and what they have done since the time of Babylon 
is control the masses through a, a, a sorcery-like financial system of debt slavery. They've controlled the masses by propping up kings and rulers by calling them god kings or, or superiors. Uh, and they want to turn the masses into their slaves like Pharaoh did in Egypt. And the people in the world today are deluded. The middle class and working class are brainwashed. They don't understand that the goal of this new feudal elite is to have all of us work on their plantations as slaves. Oh, it'll, it'll look different. We'll have tiny little apartments the size of coffins. And, uh, you know, we'll have bicycles and we'll have some little fancy electronic toys, but nevertheless, we'll be slaves. And there will be no redistribution of wealth, as socialism teaches. That's a fly, not a fly. <laughs> I guess it is a fly. That, that's a lie because the purpose of socialism and communism and Marxism, <laughs> that was developed by the Illuminati. <clears throat> so when Karl Marx wrote the Communist Manifesto, it was simply a ripoff of the Illum Illuminati Manifesto. And the Illuminati have created communism, Marxism, socialism as a total control grid to dominate a population dictatorially so that they can enrich themselves, they can enrich the 1%, and so the 1% can live like kings and queens without any resistance because there's a totalitarian regime in place to control the masses. The purpose of communism and Marxism <clears throat> uh, and socialism has never been, has never been to redistribute, redistribute the wealth. It has never been to create a classless society. It has never been to make everything equal and fair. The purpose of communism, Marxism, socialism, or progressivism has never been to bring about social justice. All the people, even if they're college-educated and, and white aging radicals like Bill Ayers and Bernadine Dorn, or the, the black activists, uh, or, or whoever, or, or the uh, Marxist professors on college campuses, or the millennials, or whoever, uh, or these uh, communist activists or anarchists, whoever these people are, or these Hollywood, you know, celebrities that believe in a false illusion of utopian Marxism. It's all, it's all bogus, man. It's all a big, stinking lie. Because the truth is, and see, all of these people are being indoctrinated like they're in a giant cult, but nobody ever calls them on it. They're in a cult. They're in a cult because what they are being taught doesn't work. <clears throat> it hasn't ever worked anywhere in any nation it's ever been tried in, in human history. And every place it has been implemented, we have hundreds of millions of deaths, the loss of freedom, the loss of religion, torture, <clears throat> concentration camps. I mean, look at Cuba for crying out loud. Horrible, nightmare dictatorship. And people look at it like it's wonderful. It wasn't wonderful. It was horrible. <clears throat> so, it's a complete lie system. And they brainwash. And you see, the thing is, if you're, you know, intellectually smart, college educated or whatever, it doesn't, education and being smart does not make you any more less susceptible to brainwashing than if you're uneducated and not necessarily smart. There's no, there's no statistical difference between smart people being brainwashed and just ordinary people being brainwashed. In fact, smart people are often easier to brainwash than just your average people. You're listening to the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. You can get more information, by the way, at paulmcguire.us. So this whole world socialist government was devised by the elite, by the Illuminati, Bertrand Russell, uh, who wrote uh, Al, uh, Brave New World. No, excuse me. Bertrand Russell was so-called atheistic mathematician, part of the Fabian Socialists. In reality, he was involved in the occult, as the others were too, by the way. 
Bertrand Russell wrote Brave New World about a totally controlled society using genetic engineering. H.G. Wells, former head of British intelligence in World War I, and the, the great science fiction author who wrote The Invisible Man, The Island of Dr. Moreau, uh, Invaders from Mars, etc. But he also wrote nonfiction books like The New World Order, The Open Conspiracy, where he spells out, man, in graphic detail, their plan to rule the planet and turn the rest of the planet into slaves. Huxley actually came out and called it the scientific dictatorship. And he said, in the truly effective scientific dictatorship, people will learn to love their slavery, which means essentially they'll be so brainwashed that they'll love the fact that they're slaves. They won't even know they're slaves. And that's what's happening. So, all these people are like sucked into this cult of belief in which they will be slaves, in which freedom, economic prosperity, freedom of religion, freedom of speech will all be lost as we come under a global totalitarian system. But the people who are the true believers of this garbage are so brainwashed. I mean, I, I don't, well, I'm going to name a name. No, I'm not going to name a name. There are people who are communist, Marxist, socialist activists who appear on television all the time, on CNN and stuff. And, and on one hand, they appear to be relatively smart people. But on the other hand, they have a fatal flaw. And that is, they can't see the obvious. That the very thing that they're promoting is a totalitarian dictatorship. It never plays out any other way. And there's this one guy... I don't want to name his name, but, he, but, but he's an activist, and he seems to be intelligent. But man, there's like a short circuit in his brain. He doesn't get it. And then people like Bill Ayers and Bernadine Dorn, one has to suspect, because they've been around the block. They live very affluent lives in very elite neighborhoods in Chicago. And these are, you know, former uh, weather underground people. Now, you can't tell me that they haven't figured out by now the true nature of a communist revolution, which is to establish a very wealthy elite that live like kings and queens and turn the masses into slaves. I mean, if they really believe that their communist Marxist revolution is going to create this great utopia for the common man, then man, every, every fuse in their brain must have blown out years ago. I'm serious. They have to be, I mean, deficient intellectually to believe that. They, they have to be so flawed. I mean, they have to have brain damage to believe that, really, because the facts scream against it. <clears throat> and Christians should know this, by the way. Bible-believing Christians in the Christian seminaries, Christian pulpits, Christian churches should know this, but they don't. They're also being brainwashed. And so you have these plethora of seeker-friendly churches where if you look at the doctrine being preached, and if you look at the game plan that is being proposed, it is literally, I could name one big seeker-friendly church, where their plan, okay, bullet point by bullet point, lines up exactly with the plan of the United Nations, bullet point by bu bullet point. And this church is involved in the Council on Foreign Relations. Council on Foreign Relations, the United Nations, their global plan is global socialist totalitarianism developed by Rockefeller and the global occult elite. What business does a church have signing on to a cult elite globalist program? And, and they can say, well, I don't believe that. There's nothing to do with the occult. Horse manure. I have facts in all of my books, documentation in all of my books about the Luciferian control of the United Nations and in the global elite. And the only reason that these Christian pastors wouldn't understand it is because, once again, they prefer to be self-dumbed down than to really do their homework and be educated and know the truth. And that's really the bottom problem with the church in America and around the world and its leadership. Jesus Christ said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. But you see, they don't know the truth, 
so the truth can't set them free. They just know the propaganda and programming they've been fed, and they didn't really bother to think through their position. They really bothered, didn't do, to do any homework and do their own research, or they could never uh, 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 join on board to a program by its own definition is designed to bring in a new world order. I mean, these people have talked about openly since the 1918 or before that their goal was to bring in a new world order. And it's not a Christian new world order. It's an occult Luciferian new world order. That's why on the back of the U.S. dollar there's an Illuminati pyramid with the all-seeing eye of Lucifer, satanic new world order. On the base of the pyramid it says Nuvos Order Seclorum, New Order of the Ages, or New World Order. On the right hand of the so side of the dollar bill there's a phoenix, the legendary bird that dies and resurrects from the dead. The phoenix bird is an occultic <coughs> symbol of the new world order. It's an occult system. It's a satanic system. You don't believe it, then you're brain dead. And you need to get shock therapy to revive some brain cell in you. You need to do something, man. You need a brain transplant. Because your brain is fried from constant input of stupidity. I mean, I'm serious. What I mean, what part of the all-seeing eye of Horus or the all-seeing eye of Lucifer who is Satan, on the back of the U.S. dollar, what part of the all-seeing eye of Satan do you not get? What part of the fact that there's an Illuminati pyramid, and the pyramid is an occult symbol of the Illuminati, do you not get? What part of the words New World Order on the basis of the pyramid do you not get? What part of the fact that the Washington, D.C. architecture of the streets and so on and so forth, and the phallic symbol, which, to be blunt, sorry for being offensive, is a penis structure from ancient Babylon, the Tower of Babel, and the womb of the Washington, uh, uh, the, the capital, do you not get? What, what part of the satanic star that's in the, arch the architecture of the map of the streets of Washington, D.C., do you not get? What part of it do you not get? What is wrong with you? I mean, really, are you, have you drunk, drank fluoridized water or ate so much junk food in your life that your brain is just fried ice cream? I mean, is your brain fried ice cream? Think of a frying pan. I want you to think about this. Do a mental exercise. I'm sorry, the train is off the track. That's just too bad. The train needs to be off the track. Think of a frying pan. Think of your favorite pint of ice cream. Take a gigantic spoon, turn the fire up high on the skillet, and throw a pint of Ben and Jerry's or Haagen Dazs or whatever your favorite ice cream is in the frying pan and burn the ice cream until it's fried completely. Would you like to eat it? No, it's useless. Well, some of you have brains like fried ice cream, man. I mean, when you ingest constant stupidity in your life, you become stupid. When you listen to that certain percentage, not all, but a very disturbingly high percentage of Christian pastors who, uh, whose so-called biblical theology is not biblical, but it is essentially theological fried ice cream. Are you listening to that man? He's a false prophet. By the biblical definition of a false prophet, he is a false prophet, and yet you go to church and every, every Sunday or Wednesday, you go to his church to listen to false doctrine. What does it say about you? And you can't tell the difference. I'm not hey, most of you, I'm not talking to most of you. Please understand, most of you. Most of you are my friends. We're in the same wavelength. You get it. I get it. We're in sync. Okay? So I'm not attacking the people that regularly listen. Because you, all, you understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking to those who you should send this message to. They'll probably never listen to me again. But maybe it will give them shock therapy to wake out of their trance state. The thing is, man, what are they doing? going to a church where they're listening to false doctrine and doctrine that is so detrimental 
to the future of America and their own personal lives. And these people that you know and I know are so spiritually dead that they, they, they've so often silenced the voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit that they, they can't, listen, they can't tell the difference between the real Christ and the false Christ. That's what, the, that's what this is really all about. Bible prophecy says the world is moving into the direction where eventually we're, we're going to have, it's already started, a one world economic system. That's already moving forward. Cashless society with a microchip implant. False prophet is going to arise to head up a one world religion and a one world economic system. And an antichrist is going to arise to rule the one world government. <clears throat> and all the people that have rejected Jesus Christ as Lord in order to accept the microchip implant, and in, in the process they have to uh, choose to accept the antichrist and worship him, they will get the, the mark of the beast, which will allow them to buy and sell in the economic system. Now, there are going to be millions of people, because they've rejected Christ, they're going to worship the Antichrist. That's how deep their deception is. But here's the, the, the very serious problem. The Bible talks about in the last days, <clears throat> the coming of a great apostasy, the coming of a great falling away which means that there will be masses of numbers of people who call themselves Bible-believing Christians, who call themselves evangelicals, who will turn away from the truth of God's Word, they will turn away from the truth of the Holy Spirit, they will turn away from the truth of Jesus Christ, and they will begin, and that's called the great apostasy or the great deception, they will turn away from Christ and they will worship the Antichrist as God. They're going to join the one world religion, the one world economic system, and they're going to worship the Antichrist as God. But they're going to deceive themselves into thinking they're still Bible-believing Christians. That's the apostasy. And guess what? The beginnings of that are happening now. So the question has to be asked in all these churches, I'm not saying every church, but in a very a disturbingly high percentage. The question has to be asked, do the people going to these churches really have the Holy Spirit inside them? Because according to the, some of the most prestigious and accurate polls conducted by the Barna Research Group and others, there is a very high number. I forgot how high it is. It's high, though. Statistically, of people who are going to Bible-believing Christians who have never been born again. I mean, it, I forgot the, 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 the percentage number, but it's high. There's this huge percentage of people who attend Bible-believing churches who have never been born again. That means they have no Holy Spirit inside them. They're not new creatures in Christ. It also means they're not going to heaven. It also means they're not saved. And it also means they have no spiritual discernment because the Spirit of God is not in them. I wonder how many of the people going to those churches, I wonder how many of the pastors are also not born again, also not saved, and also not having the Holy Spirit again in them. I'm not judging anybody. I'm simply going by Barna poll research and other polls that are very accurate, which are telling us that a very large percentage of people attending evangelical churches and so-called Bible-believing churches have never been born again. And yet, guess what? Wake up. Smell the coffee. They're functioning as leaders. They're, they're the leaders of home groups. They're the leaders of Bible studies. They're the leaders of prayer meetings. They hold all kinds of positions of leadership in the church, including elders that guide the church. But they're not born again. That's apostasy. That's what the Bible warned about in the last days, the great apostasy. We're seeing it now. And this is, right now, I'm going to unmask what's really happening in the United States and the world. Because this, what I just told you, is not just happening in the United States. It's happening to a far degree. It's happening, or has happened already, in a much more serious degree, in uh, the European nations, 
and to whatever degree in other continents on the world. Now, I'm going to unmask for you the truth of all this, what this really means in terms of the backdrop of the current political, economic, social events happening in our world right now. I'm going to unmask for you what it really means. And this may be disturbing to some of you. And it may be something you need to send to your friends, hopefully, or open to the truth by sending the link of this program at paulmcguire.us. I'm going to unmask something in a second. This is Paul McGuire. You're listening to the Paul McGuire Report. And you can get more information at paulmcguire.us. What this really means. When you understand this great apostasy, this great falling away, and what it really means, it answers a lot of questions. For example, how many people, why is it that so many people in America who claim to be Bible believing Christians have absolutely no spiritual discernment? And according to Barna Research Group polls and other polls, the behavior and the morality and the thinking and the worldview of people who go to evangelical churches and a people who are not born again, who are in what we call the world, according to the polls, there is no statistical difference between the behaviors and the thinking of those that go to evangelical churches and those that don't believe in God at all. There's no difference in the behavior and thinking. Just as much adultery, just as much pornography, just as much sleeping around, just as much believing in evolution and not believing in God's word. I mean, there's no really difference, okay? Now the question is, and that's why the church is powerless in America, by the way, because it's filled with people who are not saved. Now, here's the deeper question, though. Are all those people in the evangelical ch churches who claim to be saved, is it, the f is it the fact that they're not saved that's c causing their behavior and thinking to be the same as people who are not saved in the world? Yeah, I think so. I think we have an illusion here. We, ha we think we have a lot of people who are born again in the churches, and we have huge numbers that are, that are not, and that's why the behavior and thinking, there's no difference between the unsaved in the church and the unsaved in the world. But then there's another group, the people that are truly born again by the Spirit of God in the evangelical churches. The question is, <clears throat> is there a difference between their behavior and thinking and that of the non-saved people in the world? And I don't know if there's an accurate statistical measurement, but to, to a disturbing degree, there is very little difference between their behavior <clears throat> in the church of people who are supposedly born again and the non-saved people in the world. But it's hard to measure because what we don't really know is who's truly born again and who's just going to church pretending to be born again. I would suspect, and I don't have any uh, poll data to, to, to verify it, but that the people that are truly born again by the Spirit of God in these evangelical churches I mean, if the Holy Spirit's inside you, <clears throat> he's going to drive you towards holiness. He's going to renew your mind. So I would suspect that a lot of these st statistics are based on the fact that we have a lot of people in the churches that are not saved. But even among those that are saved in the churches, we have a lot of people that have been infected with false doctrine, bad Bible teaching, etc., etc. But there is, in the church, a remnant in America and the rest of the world, of true believers in Jesus Christ who are following God, renewing their minds with God's word, I would suspect that <clears throat> the majority of the people who listen to this program, the Paul McGuire Report, fit into that category. And there is a sizable remnant of true believers in Jesus Christ 
who have that spirit of God, who are crying out to God in prayer over this nation, who truly are obeying God, who truly are listening to God. And they consist of the remnant church, and they exist not in the United States only, but in New Zealand and Australia and the European Union and Asia and Africa and South America and North America and all around the world. There's the true remnant church. And God Almighty never needed a majority uh, to win a spiritual battle. So this remnant church has enormous power because the remnant ch church is consist consists of millions and millions and millions of people all over the world. I mean, many millions. And it is that church, the remnant church, where the people are truly born again and love God, that that is the supernatural body of Jesus Christ on earth. They have the spirit of God in them and they love Jesus and they're looking forward to, towards his appearing. And so as we move in Bible prophecy, like with Russia and China uh, uh, potentially uniting against the uh, U.S. and NATO and Syria. And by the way, we have to ask serious questions about what are the motivations for this military conflict? What are the, what are the real motivations? And then we have the Ukraine-Russian conflict. We have Psalm 83, where Syria and Russia are involved in a conflict and God super, against Israel, and God supernaturally destroys uh, the nations that come against Israel. We have Ezekiel 38, the war of Gog and Magog, where Russia, Iran, uh, Turkey, and a consortium of uh, militant Islamic nations invade Israel in the last days, and God supernaturally destroys them. So these, these uh, <clears throat> geopolitical conflicts are rising just like the Bible said they would. The apostasy is rising just like the Bible said it would. And then you and I have been called for such a time as this. Now, there's political chaos in America. There's chaos in many other nations. There's economic chaos. There's the Deutsche Bank, which could go into default, which would send a tsunami, a financial tsunami, across the world, wrecking banks, creating economic chaos. And the global elite are manipulating <clears throat> the wars, they're manipulating the economic system, they're manipulating the political system, and they're manipulating elections, and they're manipulating the media, <clears throat> because the global elite, at the very highest levels, are serving Lucif Lucifer. They are. I'm not saying everybody at the highest levels, but key leaders are, because that's what the Illuminati and all that stuff is all about. They're serving Lucifer. Because we're in the last days. That's why Satanism is rising in power in America and around the world. And that's why Wicca or witchcraft is the number one growing religion in America. Witchcraft is. That's why we see escalation of supernatural activities. But in the middle of this, in the middle of all of this, God has a covenant relationship with his true people. And he promises to supernaturally protect them. He promises to send his angelic armies to surround them. But they must understand, God's true remnant people like you, you must understand that you can't just sit in a seat and watch the end times unfold. God has called you not to be a spectator in his end times program. God has called you to be a participant with him in his end times program. God expects you to go into all the world and preach the gospel. God expects you to make disciples of all nations. God expects you to occupy until he comes, to be an intercessor for revival. And not everybody but can you know go to foreign fields and be an evangelist. But you're expected to win souls. Every believer is. And if you aren't the person actually speaking and uh, having people pray, you can still be a soul winner by praying for and supporting ministries that are winning souls to Jesus Christ. You receive the same reward, but you're supposed to be part of it. And the same with uh, making disciples of all nations and occupying until I, uh, I come. 
we're the body of Christ. We all have different gifts, talents, and abilities, but we work together for a common purpose. Now, ultimately, at this time period, God wants his people. That's you. He wants you to walk in supernatural victory. He wants you to be an overcomer in the last days. And this is why I had such a deep burden to write, to write my book, The Prophecy of the Future of America 2016-2017, along with the four DVD set of the same title. Because in the book, the Lord dealt with me about explaining to God's people what was really going on, explaining how the money system is critical to understanding Bible prophecy. But God said to me, don't leave my people you know, depressed and hopeless and doom and gloom. Teach my people from my word how they can be victorious in the nitty-gritty practical areas of life. And so the Lord opened up to me things about the life of Daniel, about the life of Joseph, and about King Solomon how they got wealth, how they got wisdom, how they got supernatural answers to prayer, how they were able to accomplish things uh, miraculously. Now, unfortunately, uh, Solomon backslid towards the end of his life. But prior to his backsliding, he left so many principles, as did, I mean, when I show you in A Prophecy of the Future of America, 2016, 2017, the principles that, are, that can be gleaned from their lives. It will revolutionize your life. It will enable you to walk supernaturally. It will enable you to think supernaturally, to walk supernaturally, and to live victoriously, have your needs provided for, have your prayers answered, receive God's supernatural guidance and protection, receive God's favor for you, your family, and your loved ones, you can walk in that. You don't have to walk in fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And despite the fact that miracles have been abused and misused by charlatans, God still performs legitimate miracles. My good friend Jeff Har Harbuck, who I hope is listening to this particular program, I know he listens regularly, uh, has been part of my ministry, and uh, he's a great man of God. He also uh, is the creator and founder of the pre-trib uh, rapture group on Facebook, and many of the people in the pre-trib rapture group on Facebook uh, listen to this program. And Jeff was working with me in uh, a big prophecy conference in uh, Florida near uh, near Tampa somewhat near Tampa anyway uh, Jeff suddenly got some kind of mysterious mysterious illness or something I don't know if the doctors fully understand whatever happened shortly after he returned from the conference and then they had to put him in a medically induced coma for for a while I mean, a relatively long time. And it looked bad. And the reports, the medical reports, kept getting worse and worse and worse. And people from his uh, uh, pre-trib rapture group would be praying for him. I would post listings encouraging people to pray. But because we got so many people to pray for Jeff, his mother, and his family, um, and we kept praying and praying. But I will, I will admit to you that many of us were, were tempted to give up hope because we were praying and then there would be a recovery and then it would get worse. And, I mean, there were times we thought this was it. You know, we, 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 were, we were despairing. We were ready to give up hope. But we kept praying, we kept praying, we kept praying. And then, you know, a number of months later, I'm talking to Jeff just the other day, and he told me, you know, his, his mind is clear as crystal. He, he's being recovered. He listens to this program in the evening. And hello, Jeff, if you're listening. 
on it. And I encourage those of you that are listening to uh, pray for Jeff Harbuck for his total recovery. And uh, it's a miracle. And, and yet we thought it was over. But he, I am telling you, from listening to the medical doctors surrounding a situation, him coming out of a coma and everything else that wanted with it is nothing short of a total miracle. And that miracle was produced by Jesus Christ in answer to prayer. So God still answers prayer. God still performs miracles. Not just for Jeff's life, but for your life. And that is how we're going to make it until the return of Christ. God is not going to abandon us. It's like he didn't abandon Jeff. God is not going to abandon us. He has a covenant with us. And that should give you hope. Did you know that if you love Jesus Christ and you're born again, you are in the palm of God's hand? And God, is his hands are not like that earthly insurance company. I don't want to name it because I don't want to get sued. <laughs> but... And there's another insurance company that talks about a particular physical object uh, referencing security. Look, you're in security when you're in the hands of Jesus Christ, and it's on the solid rock I stand. Everything else or all else, all else is sinking sand. Stinking sand. I have not had breakfast, and that was a horrible statement. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't have breakfast. It's an old hymn, and I'm a terrible singer, but I will do my best to, to sing the one lyric I can remember. On Jesus Christ, the solid rock I stand, all else is sinking sand. And that, that lyric, on Jesus Christ, the solid rock I stand, all else is sinking sand. So when you put your life on the solid rock of Jesus, also, a mighty fortress is our God. I believe that was a hymn composed by Martin Luther. Correct me if I'm wrong. God is a mighty fortress, a high tower of refuge in the time of trouble. And God promises to deliver his people from the wrath to come, and when we do have to face trials and tribulations in life, he gives us the supernatural power to overcome in the middle of them. Now, I want you to join with me in prayer right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And you can pray along with me, which I encourage you to do, or just pray silently. And let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you right now. Countless numbers of us around the world listening yeah, and through the power of agreeing prayer, we come to you, Jesus. And your word says, whatever we ask in your name, it will be done for us by our Father who is in heaven. So, Lord Jesus Christ, we ask right now that you would continue to miraculously heal Jeff, strengthen his family, and heal him until full recovery. And Father, in the name of Jesus, for every other person listening out there who needs a supernatural touch of the healing power of God, we ask right now, Jesus, that every person asking for the healing virtue of God would receive at this very second, God, as they reach out in faith, that they would receive at this very second, the healing virtue of God. And we thank you, God, that as people posture themselves in faith to receive the healing virtue of God, we praise you that the healing virtue of God is filling and saturating bodies, minds, souls, and spirits, God, right now in the name of Jesus. By his stripes you're healed. And Jesus is healing you as you receive his healing virtue by faith right now in the name of Jesus. The healing virtue of God is flowing throughout your entire biological system, your body, soul, and spirit. And Father, in Jesus' name, we ask that you would break disease and sickness and malfunction off people right now in the name of Jesus. 
And at this moment, God, we command in the name of Jesus that the power of God would descend upon every individual asking for healing in their bodies and even in their minds. God, right now in the name of Jesus, let the power of God be released. And together, we command that their bodies would radiate with divine health. They would have speedy recoveries. You would bless the medical doctors and you would uh, make them completely whole, Father. Conquer with your power and drive disease and sickness out of the midst of every person praying. In Jesus' name, amen. And Lord, we ask that you would supply the financial needs for every person praying for them right now. Open doors, God. Give people the finances they need. Give people the favor they need. Lord, for all the people who feel like their prayers have been locked up, we unlock their prayers right now, God. And we believe, Lord, that their prayers have been unlocked and that you are answering their prayers right now. Prayers concerning the salvation of their children, the salvation of their spouses. Father, we pray that the supernatural power of God would go into every area of relational conflict, marital conflict, and family conflict in the name of Jesus. And we bind the powers of darkness off of all these relationships, God. And we ask that the love of God and the healing power of God would restore them. Lord, give people direction for their lives. Give people uh, release destinies and callings, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, and you just pray and claim this together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we command the spirit of oppression to be bound off people's lives. We command the spirit of fear to be cast off of people's lives, Father, in the name of Jesus. We set them free. Father, we command the rivers of living water to flow out of their inmost being, and that they would experience right now a, a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, and that the uh, joy of the Lord would be their strength, God. Praise your name, Jesus. Send in your angelic armies to protect your people at every facet of their lives, God. Let, them, let everybody praying be under a covering of supernatural protection. And Father, in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, we bind all principalities and powers. We bind all demonic influences off of the lives of your people. We command those evil uh, spirits to be dispersed and sentenced into, into the abyss, Father, and that you would supernaturally erect a wall of fire of protection for all your people, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for the uh, political processes in every nation, that in America and every nation where people are praying, we pray, Father, that you would tear down the wicked, the ungodly, and that you would put into power the righteous and the godly, Father. We ask in every nation where people are praying that you would supernaturally intervene in these affairs and you would give us righteous, godly leaders in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask God that in every nation where your people are praying, we ask that you would sovereignly protect your people from the mechanisms of the occult uh, and the mechanisms of the elite globalists who seek to uh, enslave, we ask that you would dismantle uh, their evil plans, Father. And Lord, we know that Bible prophecy is being fulfilled, so we ask God in the name of Jesus that every person would uh, have their destiny released and their mission clarified in these prophetic last days, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, help all of us to have our spiritual gifts and natural gifts released, and let all of us hear your words when we meet you in heaven. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now you can go to paulmcguire.us and contact me if you choose. Again, we want to spread this message across the United States as fast as possible. 
especially ramping up the television ministry, expanding the radio ministry. And we, do, we want to do it quickly while the windows of opportunity are open, and we want to spread revival and a, and a fervent, passionate belief in God's Word and a first fervent and passionate belief in God's pre, uh, prophetic Word. In order to do that, I'm asking you uh, to become a regular monthly partner with me, my family, and our ministry in prayer, intercession, fasting, and join us as a regular partner, prayer partner. And for those of you that God has blessed, I'm asking you to prayerfully join us as a regular monthly partner in contributions or donations or a one-time gift so that we can fulfill the ministry that God has called us to f fulfill at this ur urgent hour. So I thank those of you that have chosen to become already regular uh, partners in giving and contributions. And I thank those of you that are, have decided to join us in this effort. And for those of you that partner with us by distributing the articles and the radio program and the videos available at paulmcguire.us, I thank you also. Together, it's through partnership of true believers in Jesus Christ. Together, we can uh, fulfill the Great Commission which is to go into all the world and preach the gospel, win souls, make disciples of all nations, occupy until I come or do business until I come, act as a watchman on the wall, and uh, deal with the prophetic issues from Bible prophecy and analyzing current events through the lens of Bible prophecy, because that's one of the most powerful tools of evangelism there is. And in the meantime, I, I encourage you to get the book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, 2016-2017. And if you choose the four DVD set to go with it, because it will explain to you what's really happening, what's really happening, and then how you can be victorious in the last days. How you can uh, overcome, even though the world may be chaotic. God bless you. I'm your brother in Christ. Looking forward to talking to you again on the next edition of the Paul McGuire Report. Remember, Jesus is coming. Maranatha, Jesus is coming soon.